Hey everybody, I'm Cinnamon Cooney, your art sharp, and today together we're going to paint step by step this gorgeous pink peony. This is a very loose floral, uh, super beginner friendly. I'm going to break it down step by step. I'm going to tell you the materials, I'm going to tell you the colors, I'm going to tell you the techniques. To help me do that is my husband, John. Hello. He's going to make sure that while I'm explaining how to paint this, that the robotic cameras are really focused, zoomed in, really on top of whatever I'm demonstrating. If you are very new to my channel, you should know that this comes with a free traceable. It comes with a step-by-step -step mini book. If you were here because you're taking part in the 30-day painting challenge, Acrylic April, where we're painting together every day, congratulations. I just want to give you a clap for still hanging in. Doing a daily painting is just one of those great transformative things, and I admire you for doing it with me. Um, there's nothing really to do guys, whether you've just come in to paint a flower or whether you've come back to paint another flower, but to get your paint, get your brushes and come back and meet me at this canvas. Cause I'm going to show you how to paint this flower. So for today's really fun video, we have another eight by eight surface. I have a wish or intention on it for you. And this is really specifically for someone, but I realized it could apply to anyone that if you are needing a miracle, whatever that miracle is that it finds you and it flows to you. So you're not chasing it, but it chases you and finds you on my pouts. You know where the colors are. I have ultramarine blue, quinacridone magenta, phthalo blue, cad yellow medium, phthalo green and burnt sienna and titanium white. I'm going to begin today's painting with a three quarter inch angle. You could use a half inch angle, one inch angle for this purpose. It's not important. You could even use a bright. Honestly, we're just painting the background. So you just use what background brush you like. This one isn't really too technique specific to the brush. This is the brush you had in hand and decided to use. Yeah. It'd be more, more important like how we do kind of the loose expressiveness than it is like what specific brush it is. I'm going to load up um, some white up here in the corner. Sometimes when I want a light atmospheric effect, I will pre uh, kind of wet it with white paint. That way when I'm coming in light, it stays light. That's a little trick I have learned over the years. So I'm coming in and I'm just making it little, see, go back down, be regular, and then blend in. It's a very sort of furtive, Blending, fading, keeping things, you know, very loose. Cool. And right here, maybe get a little bit darker. And this type of technique kind of creates an out of focus thing. We've done this a few times. Have we not? Yes, we have. I'm like totally grilling John. Have like, we not? I didn't know that this was like a quiz. This was <laughs> didn't know this was a quiz. I wasn't paying attention, teacher. <laughs> no, I, was, I was drinking coffee. Serious questions. Thinking about focus, and you're like darker over here, kind of darker please. along this line. The reason we're darker along this line is so that our white petals will really show. But that's also why we kind of create this sort of light effect, so we know that light's coming through. I might even bring some more down kind of in a V. I'm, gonna have I'm to implying that light comes down in a V by using the white paint. Start keeping notes or something. I mean, not like you're stuck here every single video watching the paint dry. <laughs> Just like, that is the only like fantasy football player but in art. <laughs> That's true. I'm going to get a little of my phthalo green and my burnt sienna mixed together, and they make such a lovely deep green. I like them very much, and I'm going to come down here and kind of do some variants of that. Low. It's funny. I I find myself following. A little blue. You find yourself following. Art companies, the way that many people follow NASCAR teams or Formula One teams. It's, it's like. True. You know, so around through here, we're going to go deeper into the green a little bit. It's true. He does. It's very funny. I'm a business nerd. I do too, though. I find, I find the paint companies, the more I've gotten into the paint companies, um, fascinating. Like there's so much, not just with my brush deal, but just generally in art, 
so much drama. Drama, drama, drama. You know what also? There's so men there's so much integrity among a lot of the players mm-hmm. that they take pride in their company as I'm much gonna, as I'm gonna product. I'm gonna let you do that, Sorry. but I'm going kind of fast and I want them to yeah, know yeah. what I'm doing. I'm picking up white and blue while we're talking. Sorry. And working it into the green. No, it's okay. Business nerd. Business nerd. <laughs> well, me too. I mean I'm like it's fascinating to me. I just gotta let them know that through here we very quickly, while it was all wet, added a little yellow and white and blue into that kind of creating some light and dark as we go i think i want to wipe off the extra white and get back into some brown and green as you do so definitely creating different color scapes right no it is fascinating i, I loved we were just at a art art trade show for art materials and it was just amazing to Even, like, see so many people yeah, like, not, and, and not just the partners that we work with, but, like, like it's just everybody, not everybody, but a lot. All the, a lot of the folks that were there at, at DAMTA, for sure, um, have a lot of pride in their product. Yeah, and that's beautiful to see. Yeah, and it's just really great to be able to go and at least be a little part of an industry that really cares that much about what they do. That is kind of nice, isn't it? Adding little bits here. Now, I do want to kind of also work some pink in. This is kind of a busy background, right? You're working it. We're working it. Actually, it's very complex. All right. We're going to add a little pink. At this stage, just a few bits where it blends into the green background. And the reason for that is, yes, we're going to come in and, and hit with some white pink. Those are the other flowers you can't see. They're out of focus. They're out of focus and they're... Boop, boop. But you'll know, you'll know where they're at later when you get the front one. Yeah, and you'll be like, oh, that's them. Now, this is as far as I want to take it. Let's look at this real quick and kind of talk about what we did. We worked a very loose brush stroke, very light up here in the upper right corner, building into blue so that we had some contrast for our white petals that are coming. We worked burnt sienna, phthalo green, and a little cad yellow through here, creating sometimes more yellow, sometimes more deep green. We also would add a little white and blue into that mix. And then we finished with a little pink and white, letting it blend into the canvas. Before we go on to the next part, we're going to dry all of this. Dry it very thoroughly. And then we're going to come back and paint the next loose and slightly out of focus layer. Now, this is my natural speed for painting, but that doesn't mean that has to be your speed for painting. This is just what, over the years, is my comfortable pace. All so, speeds are valid speeds. All speeds are valid speeds. Don't feel like you have to keep up. It's okay to play this at half speed or pause it or rewind. And remember, the mini book lets you really focus on a single step with the video and you don't get lost in all the activity. I'm going to make a curve line with my angle brush again. This is the quarter, uh, three quarter inch angle. Coming up like through fingers over from the side and kind of arcing up to here. This sort of lets me know where my stem is, but this also lets me know where the little opening of my flower is going to be because everything is going to be a bowl from this point. I'm going to take a little of this dark value here too and I'm going to make some very strong kind of deep marks around notice that those have really noticeable value in the background now as it deepens come in with some yellow here kind of lightening up that space around the stem and so sometimes that's what we're doing is we're Coming back when the paint is dry, creating even another layer, a pop of surprising color, of unexpected moment kind of happening. Uh, one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of my white and my phthalo blue. And I'm going to make sure some of this is in the, in the loose area. Kind of implies that sky is peeking through the leaves doesn't it yeah it's amazing how that works it doesn't take too much but it does do a big impact 
Another thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some pouncers and I'm going to get a little of my blue and white. And I'm going to make some, let's get a little more blue. Little magic. Little bokeh circles. Now, if you didn't have a round sponge, these are called uh, pouncers or bokeh sponges or uh, daubers. There's a bunch of different names, um, but basically they're in most craft stores. You can also just come in with like a round brush. This is a number 12 round blender and just. So I also found. Paint some very careful little round circles that you layer, right? So it's possible to do either a brush or a sponge. What else did you find? Is sometimes in old, in packaging, especially like AA battery holders. Oh, they make the best. Yes. Keep the, the little comes. rounds. Yeah. That. That is some of my fave. So you'll get laser cut foam that'll have the little inserts removable for AA and AAA batteries. Save those little things because they're little foam pouncers. That, so they come from, like, I got a battery organizer that had a billion of them. And I was like, ooh. So, that kind of creates some interesting little flex. Always wash these out thoroughly because the if the paint dries on them then it just ruins them and then my last little bit is we talked about some bright pink so i'm going to grab my last little pink and white coming and adding little spots see how we're doing kind of like our you know we sort of did this in our cosmo flower if you're doing the whole 30 days you've kind of done some of this right And we're just playing with this concept more. Ooh, I like that. Trying to create some interesting marks. That's what, that's what that was. They, there was a lot of talk of interesting marks. At Namta, wasn't there? Just like, ooh, that's an interesting passage. Yes, it's a good mark. You have made a mark. I was like, wow, there's some artist speak happening. All the time. It's really rather lovely. Can even get a little yellow into this and some white and that'll. So now there's these very out of focus. Shaper stuffs. Coming on in. And this is going to make the garden kind of. Full. It does. So we have our focus, but. There's some activity back there, just beyond what we can focus on. And we enjoy that activity. What a pretty, pretty abstract background at this point. Like, that's almost an abstracted background. It's real pretty at this point. And yet, we haven't even gone into, I'm going to make another, like, because it's all dry now on my, my stem, just to make it darker and more. It's almost like a statement, because there's clearly this empty space in the middle. So, like, there's a void where the focus should be, but everything is out of focus. <laughs> Everything's your focus out of focus. The center on. of the non-focus. It's as if we have a plan. I don't know what's going on. It's <laughs> let's, <so> meta. <laughs> let's try this. Let's try our painting, our miracle painting, and uh, continue on. So we're going to be using a number eight filbert. This brush almost makes it feel like you're cheating when you're painting flowers because of the shape, the curve. You could also use my cat's tongue um, if you still have that from the Art Tripper brush line. But just any rounded kind of filbert stylish brush here will work because it gives you that cool sort of nice edge. Now I'm going to just so you know where it is, right? Right about here. You don't have to do this mark here. I'm just letting you guys see it so you understand what I'm visualizing. This is the face of the flower. The bowl curves out like this and curves up like that. So that's what we're going to be working. I'm going to go ahead and get a little white and a little yellow even, uh, you know, for some bright stuff. And we're going to curve in some wonderful petals. All right, let's put one here. Let's be very brave. And see, we'll curve towards that yellow. That was very brave. We're just very brave. 
Maybe a little more yellow. Focus where there was not before. All right, put another little one there. We're just being super brave. Maybe on the edge a little bit, making kind of an edgy one. Got to get those little torn, interesting bits. Always so fascinating to me. Let's come back this way. And you can see it just sort of makes those petals for you. Come in and uh, maybe get a little, hmm, gosh, ultramarine blue on there. I just kind of went and got some different colors so that we can kind of neutralize some. I just pick in, and it's okay if it grabs some pink or it grabs some anything, really. That's, that's okay. A little of the purple going there with the ultramarine blue and the quinacridone. And come curl in here. These are sort of shadows that are happening. Not even necessarily separate petals, as much as the light that's playing. Go ahead and reload into white. And kind of just drag down loosely. There we go. Let's call that a step, right? Because it's weird to paint loose sometimes, isn't it? It's a little weird to paint these sort of loose open flowers. Remember, you can go online and look at pictures of pink peonies from every angle. It's fabulous if you can go to the grocery store and pop some in a vase next to yourself when you're painting, because you'll look there and you'll see little bits of things. I am gonna dry this before I do the next step. When we come back, we'll add more petals. So we're going to continue on our layering. Now I am going to put a little of my interior work in. I'm going to take my cad yellow and some of my quinacridone magenta. And I'm going to just come in here and make some little marks just with the toes. So that they're kind of little open little bits. Doesn't mean I won't add some yellow to the touch of it. I'm just kind of implying the center. The little pollination moments and we'll come back and get some yellow just on here not wild how that works it really is capture little dots dots touching 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 this is hard to remember how to be just loose and expressive with it right but you got to get that little part i'm going to let you take that in because that kind of really adds you know, a bit there, rinse out. And I'm gonna go ahead and get a little pink and white kind of loosely mixed together. Loosely mixed means I haven't really integrated it totally. I'm gonna come here and pull down. And create that sort of outward petal. Next one, I'm gonna get a little more white here. I'm gonna do edge it on the other side. So when I do this, this is an interesting side. The side that I edge is actually really important. So if I'm painting this side, I would edge here. And if I'm painting that side, I would actually edge on the far side of it. Okay? Okay. So right there. If you were worried, would you dry before you did those pink petals in? No, because they're on the outside of these, and it's okay blending them in. Ah. Right? And and we're going to continue to add to it. So now I'm going to dry oh. and start to put in some forward petals. So you okay. were close. I was close. Right? We're just sort right. of letting that. It's okay if a little bit of this picks up into the petals. That's actually kind of maybe a, a yeah. wonderful little moment. But right now we're just going to... Kind of get that. We're going to dry and then come back and layer in more.
So I want to come in and put some sort of downward following because when the bull opens, some of them fall kind of to the base. And so I've got to capture that. I'm going to add a little yellow to my brush and a little pink and some white as you do. And I'm going to let's sort of give ourselves a little guideline, say that there's a one kind of coming out here. And then there's something kind of coming down here. We get a little more pink. And then I'll pull in from here, kind of creating that loose downward. Isn't that great how that happens? Just loosely mix, see loosely. Come blending back out using the shape and directionality of this brush. Wow, those are really cool petals. And I really load some white here. Pull in a little more white. And this time I'm going to kind of curl it down like this. A little bit on the toe. It's like a little torn petal. Let's go ahead and get some yellow in here. Just touch that edge. Oh, that's a challenge, but we're going to get it. So pretty. So pretty. We're going to come over and actually, here's what. I need more white, John. Thing to recognize we'll when you need white. more of a color. There we go. A little more of a color. Now, an interesting thing I can do here is, well, these are now dry. And I needed to get more white out anyways. I'm going to load up my brush. And just make sure that I create like a little layer of bright light to these outer ones. And I can even come here on this edged one. And edge it with white. Isn't that surprising? Just out of the blue. Having some fun. Edge that one with white. Back into our pink. We've got some deep pink we've got to deal with now. So I'm going to get a lot more pink. But still loosely mixed. This one is going to curve this way. So I'll give myself a little guide. That was bright pink and kind of came into there. Now I'm going to have separate kind of thin petals that are going to be edged here or curled up that layer over the top of these. But that's why we really want to get them in now. I'm going to get a little yellow into that, a little pink. Another little downward. Oh, I painted over one of my bokehs, but that's okay. We don't mind. Rinse out. And I'm not even going to worry about these being dry. I'm just going to get loaded up with some white. Just white. I'll go ahead and blend in. That while, well. look at those petals just becoming, right? We see them, we find them, and there we are. Let's dry everything. We'll come back and we'll do our next layer of petals in.
So now there's sort of a middle range of petals that are facing us or curling up. These are a little more challenging to do because we've got to capture that sort of flow of the brush, brush stroke. The first one I'm going to do, I'm going to do in a kind of a mid pink. I'm sure I'm loaded up enough to get a good flow. A little more thoroughly mixed. And this edge, I'm going to come in and in and in. A little more red. Kind of to pull that sort of in. And it will have to layer because I'm going to come in with a curl. It's going to kind of hit it and then we're going to white edge that. All right. So it's kind of a weird one. You got to get it in there like that. Now we're going to do a curl. I'll do it almost entirely white. Maybe with a little bit of that sort of toning of that light lavender that we had. That's going to be an interesting challenge because it'll come here. We'll have to put a few of those little staples back. And I'll put a few more back in. I want to see just a few more of those. All right. And now the other one's a little bit more dry. We're going to come in and go. That's a little bit curved up now. And I can even come on the edge here. Kind of tipping that curled petal in. So we're just curling and discovering our little petals. This one is a little bit messier in that way. Make sure I have a nice deep pink underneath here. Shade it. Wipe out and then a little more weight. There we go. So that one's sort of facing us too. I'm trying the little edges there. And then we come back, I'm going to do little edge tipping just to kind of finish out the flower. And I want to put a little more yellow focus in the center and fill out any petals that I think are kind of missing, like tucking them in here and there. So the flower is quite open and quite messy. So I'm going to come back, still my filbert. I'm going to get a little bit of my yellow into my quinacridone again. And even coming in a little bit of touch there. Just getting that back to that fun, playful bit there. Because that center is just everything to me. Rinse out, maybe a little more yellow. That looks really good. Get into some white, and I haven't rinsed off even. Let's extend this a little bit out. I tear that. Add little bits here and there, filling out this flower some. If I want to add a little arc to a petal, I can pull it in. We can also come here on the upper edges of these and add that little white edging. 
Isn't that white edging just everything? Sometimes maybe with a little yellow in it. That's fun. Oh, look at that one go out there. This is where we come in and we exaggerate. I know, it's just fun. This is just really amazing. It is their own, they're like music. I don't know, I don't know how to explain it, but they're just. They're just perfect. And this brush just makes it so much more fun to even do. And put a little pinks in there. Oh, man. I mean, I think what the thing is, is one can just sort of go at it and go at it and go at it. And I've got one last little bit to do here. But I've I really also got to have the wisdom to know when, okay, I've done it. Right? And that's, that's a tough thing. Because in these flowers, you can just play and play and play and play and play. Over petal. You can, well, I don't know. Any flower can have too many petals. But... It's just fun to weird urge to go like with the yellow right there. Really want to. There we go. I'm just kind of. I'm implying. Oh, I like that a little bit. Mm. Just fun. All right. I think this was a fun day. I know it was like a quick one. I know sometimes these loose ones are in some way more intimidating and overwhelming, but I think they're great to get into because it helps you remember, hey, we can be light in this or we can be deep in this. And really, honestly, after Sunday, I imagined you needed a light in this. <laughs> Because it was a lot. Uh, if you weren't aware, we painted a gorgeous scene uh, of a horseback rider through Cosmo Flowers, kind of inspired by 1883's Elsa. So it was a whole thing. I I'm thought it was your walkaway horse. Yeah. Well, because, I mean, it is a walkaway. I do a lot of walkaway girls um, for like 10 years. <laughs> and this was a That's walkaway about. girl on a horse. On a horse. A little kind of signature, not too much, not too bright, not too overwhelming to the painting. When we come back, I'm going to tell you what you're going to do next. So that was a lot of fun. This is a nice match to the peony that we did at the beginning, but we added just a little more complication to it. So hopefully these skills are building into them. If you just came by to paint this gorgeous pink flower, welcome. Don't forget to hit subscribe because I do this all the time. You got to subscribe. You got to ring the bell. So YouTube knows you, lets you know when I'm live, when I'm streaming, when I'm uploading, when I'm sending you a short. Remember, you can see one minute peaks of these videos in the short shelf. So you can be like, do I want to get in that hmm. and see it ahead of time before you hop in. Sometimes it'll also help you kind of get mentally prepared for what's coming up in the video. Tomorrow, we're going to have another nice light one, kind of let you recover from Sunday if you're doing the daily painting. I uh, can't wait to see your artwork in the group, the Acrylic April group and online. Remember to hashtag the Art Sherpa if you're on Instagram or Pinterest you're sharing with me. And I'm also on TikTok. And I love to see your versions of the paintings. If you have any questions, 
I mean, any questions, even for John, yep. any questions, put those in the comments of the YouTube videos after the show. And I check that all the time. Sometimes it's a little hard to find them on Facebook, but I do find them in the groups. Um, so you put those in after the show and I do try to go back and even answer older ones on older videos from years ago. I'm always in checking that. We have those free resources, the mini book, the traceables, everything on the website. It's going to be available to you like ongoing after this, right? Yeah. So you can do this anytime. You can take your time with this. You don't have to rush through and remember what you enjoy is sustainable. Be good to yourself. Be good to each other. And I want to see you at an easel really soon.